Hello, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe Jewell, and today I am doing the impossible task of ranking the top 10 worst Taylor Swift songs of all time. I know, this is going to get very controversial. Before I begin, I think it is important to say that I genuinely don't hate any Taylor Swift song. There are songs that I don't love. There are songs that when they come on, I skip them, but not because I hate them, just because Taylor has so many incredible songs that I would rather listen to those than listen to the ones that don't really work for me, okay? I wanna just say that before we get into the ranking. I also wanna say that this is a very, very subjective list. What works for me may not work for you and vice versa. I am 100% certain that there are songs on this list of mine that would maybe be in your top 10 best Taylor Swift songs of all time. And there are probably songs that you love from Taylor that I do not love, right? This is an exercise in having to make hard decisions, okay? So I just wanna add that because I'm sure there are gonna be people who don't like the choices I have on this list, who are gonna comment things like I have no taste or whatever. (laughs) But I think it's important to remember we all have different thoughts, feelings, and opinions, and that's okay. That's what makes being a music fan and being a Taylor Swift fan fun. Because let's face it, this girl has like, I don't know, more amazing songs than you can even count. And I have to say this exercise was very challenging to find the 10 that I don't love as much. Some, I, it was easy, but others I kind of had to dig and I kind of had to think about it and figure it out. I also want to say that I am not putting this putting this list in any particular order because honestly, I, I, I can't rank the top 10 worst songs. I'm just giving you the 10 worst songs, um, but this is in no particular order. I also did not include any of the Christmas songs in in this list because I don't, I just didn't feel, it. It's it's hard to really compare like a Christmas song to an album song or something else. I don't know. I just made the decision to not include any of the Christmas music in this list. Okay. All right. Now that we have all of that squared away, I think it is time to get into the list. Starting with maybe the most obvious song to be on this list. And I think it is sort of universally believed to be one of Taylor Swift's worst songs. And that is unfortunately me. Where to even begin with this song? This is honestly one of the more baffling Taylor Swift songs of all time. And just like the kind of story behind it and how it was positioned to us and presented to us, it is really fascinating. This song was Taylor's lead single off of the Lover album. Before we ever heard another second of Lover, we heard me. And I have to be honest, the first time I heard this, I was nervous. I was nervous about what the album was going to be. I was sort of confused by her decision to pick this song, especially once I heard the album and I heard songs like Cruel Summer. I I really didn't understand why she picked me to be the first single. I don't think it's a very good pop song and I also don't think it's very good lyrically and I feel like Taylor does a really good job with her music. I feel like a lot of her music is both really good sonically, musically, and also very strong lyrically, but there are oftentimes instances where maybe it's not as strong of a lyrical performance from her, but the music is so good. A good example of that for me is a song like Shake It Off, which I don't think is like a writing masterpiece, but I think is so catchy and has such a great beat and melody that it's okay that the writing isn't as strong. On the other hand, there are oftentimes songs where the the production is a lot more quiet, it's a lot more um, simple, but the writing is so strong and that's what elevates the song. And I feel like in the case of me, neither was really working for me. Um, and you know, the, hey kids, spelling is fun. Like, I don't know. I've, I've heard a lot of people say that this song is fit for like a children's television show and I completely agree. And it would probably be fine on like a, yeah, kids show. It, it just shouldn't have been on the album and it certainly shouldn't have been the lead single of the album. Sorry if that offends you. <laughs> okay, moving on to our next song, which is Closure. Again, 
might be controversial. This is a song off of the Evermore album. Listen, Taylor made a very distinct choice in terms of the production of this song, right? You listen to the very first 15 seconds of the song and you're like, whoa, this is different than any other Taylor Swift song I've ever heard before. I can appreciate that she tried something different, that she tr wanted to be a little bit more experimental. It just doesn't work for me. It just doesn't work for me. Like I, I think I've maybe listened to this song two times from start to finish, but typically when it pops up on my shuffle, I am pressing skip. Um, it is just, it's just not, it's just not the song for me. And I feel like Evermore is an album that has a lot of amazing songs. Um, and so I don't really feel the need to, uh, to listen to, um, to closure when it comes on. Um, sorry. Okay. Moving on the last time. I think this one might be controversial because I do think people like this off of the Red Album. Again, there's nothing that I can point to about this song that's I that I don't let that that like stands out as something I really don't like. It just it just doesn't work for me. I just find it to be a little bit boring. I think in terms of her collaborations, songs where she's collaborating with, with different artists, I think it's one of her weaker ones. Um I mean yeah, I, I I just I don't it doesn't um it doesn't mean as much to me as I think it means to other people and I think I think she has better collaborations and again it's a song I love Red Red is my favorite album of Taylor Swift's but it is a song where or it, yeah it's a song that I if I'm listening to Red I'm like I just want to get to the next great song on this album and so it's a song I often skip okay next song. Only the Young. Now, this is the song that came out, for those who don't know this song or maybe aren't as familiar, it's a song that Taylor released following her documentary, Miss Americana. It is her sort of political song about engaging young people, that young people can change the world and they're the ones who are going to make the difference in the world. I can really appreciate the message of the song. I appreciate what she was trying to do with the song. Again, I just... It missed the mark. I, and we'll, spoiler alert, not to get too far ahead of ourselves with, with the list here, but political songs for Taylor, I don't, I don't know that she's figured out the best way to do those quite yet. I find that, especially with Only the Young, Taylor is an incredible writer. She is such a good writer and she's so, she's so smart and she's so sharp and she's so excellent with her words. But to me, this just feels very surface level. It feels very surface level and I feel like, I feel like she could give us so much more, especially if she's wanting to make a political song. Um, and I hope that as she like gets older and evolves and grows and all that, she will be able to do that for us eventually. But yeah, this is one where like I l listened to it when it came out and then I just kind of like moved on with my day. All right, next song, London Boy. This is, I think, a very controversial song among the Swifty community. I think there's people who really love it and there's people who really hate it. I would be lying to you if I said that there weren't times or there haven't been times in the past where I like kind of found myself bobbing my head to this song because it's catchy, but it's also very cheesy. It's very, and I mean, I would also be lying to you if I said that my opinion of it hasn't changed. It's, it's definitely changed since Taylor is no longer with said London boy. I just, I find it to be kind of a silly song. Um, she's just naming all the different places in London that she likes to go to with her boyfriend. Again, I just, I don't think it's like her strongest song. And I, and back to the point I made about me where I either want the song to be really good sonically and like production wise, or I want it to be really strong lyrically. I don't feel like this song offers me either. Um, but I do like the Idris Elba part at the beginning. That, that, that part's fun. Okay. Glitch is the next song. Glitch from Midnight's 3 a.m. version. It's another song where I don't hate it. It's a perfectly fine song. I just often find myself skipping it. I just, I probably listened to it a couple times and then I thought, oh, this is fine. And I, and I move on. But my bar for Taylor is so high. It is so incredibly high that even songs that are just fine, I move on from. Okay, that was fine. But you have so many fantastic songs that I am choosing to focus my energy on those fantastic songs. So again, and this was a hard one. I like added this kind of, a, I was trying to find a 10th song to add to the list. And this happened to be that song. Again, I don't hate it. It's a perfectly fine song. It's just, it's just not the one 
for me. Now, this one might be controversial, and it's also from Midnight's, and it is Dear Reader. I know people like this song a lot. It's the closing song off of the Midnight's, um, off of the like traditional standard Midnight's version of the album. It does nothing for me. It makes me feel nothing. I had, I tend to have pretty high expectations for her closing album track because I feel like oftentimes it's sort of like, you know, it, it summarizes the album. And this song is definitely trying to do that. But I like Daylight is one of my favorite songs ever off of Lover, an amazing closing track. Clean from 1989, another amazing closing track. And so I think I went into listening to this song thinking like, okay, this is going to be it for me. And it just, it just doesn't do anything for me. And I don't have any other real explanation other than that. It just, I find it to be slightly boring. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. We have two left. You need to calm down is the next song on the list. Again, I just don't think it's a very good pop song. And I think when Taylor put out Lover and she put out Me and then she put out You Need to Calm Down, I don't know if it was just me or other people in the Swifty community, but I was a little bit nervous about what this album was going to be because I just was like, these are not very, these are not very good songs. Also, I feel like the lyrics and everything, it's just a little bit dated. Like it's a song that's supposed to be, you know, about supporting the LGBTQ community, which I think is a wonderful thing to do. And I appreciate what she was trying to achieve with the song, but I, I feel like it's kind of like a political song in quotes without really being very political. It's like a watered down political song. And like I said, with Only the Young, I think Taylor is such a great writer. I think she could do, if she wanted to do her like politics song, I think she could, but I don't feel like she should do it in these sort of like big poppy, this big poppy way. It just, it it just doesn't work for me personally. Is it a fun song to hear in concert on the Eras tour? Sure. Am I going to Spotify and pressing play on this song? I'm not. I'm not, unfortunately. Okay. The final song on the list, and again, this is in no particular order, is Gorgeous. And I think this might be the most controversial song that I have on the list. But I honestly, ever since Gorgeous came out, whenever that was, six years ago now, more than that, almost six years ago, I I didn't like it. I've never liked it. I always thought it was, again, kind of a cheesy song. I don't think the writing is particularly great in the song. It's just, it's just never worked for me. And I don't, I don't love it. And and if I'm looking at like all of the reputation album, this is one that I routinely skip. There are not actually, I don't think I skip any other song on reputation other than gorgeous. And I know this is controversial because I know people love this song. A lot of people love this song, but it's just not a song that works for me, unfortunately. So there you have it. Those are my 10 least favorite, my the, the 10 worst Taylor Swift songs in my opinion. I would love to. I'm sure all of you are going to share your opinions um, about my list, but I would love to know what your top 10 worst Taylor Swift songs are. Do you agree with my takes? Disagree? Do you have any hot takes, like any Taylor Swift songs that you know other people love that you do not love? Share those in the comments because I would love to see what you guys think. I'm sure that we, you know, again, it's totally fine that we all have different opinions. And I and I love to see people's hot takes when it comes to Taylor Swift. I'm sure that we'll do at some point my top 10 favorite best Taylor Swift songs, which might be, again, another controversial <laughs> video. We'll have to see. Make sure to subscribe to our channel if you're not already, if you're a Taylor Swift fan, you're going to want to subscribe because we're going to have a lot of Taylor Swift content coming for you in the next couple of weeks, months. So prepare yourselves, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.